We're at Daddy Maddie's Barbecue in Madison. How's the barbecue, Chris? Oh, it's amazing. I'm looking forward to digging into this. Today we're in Madison. We've got top quality, low and slow barbecue and Colorado style Mexican. We're at Daddy Maddie's Barbecue. Matt, I'm so excited to be here. Tell us how this passion project started and turned into a restaurant. Well, it's, it's as I like to say to you know, any new customers that come in, it is a uh, series of bad decisions all strung together. I started in my backyard just cooking for my neighbors. Uh, I cooked at Cub Scout campouts. And at some point someone said, you're pretty good at this. You should start a catering business. And so I started doing that, but I didn't want to uh, benefit from this effort too much while I was sort of uh, starting it off. So I donated all of the profits to uh, the local food pantry while I sort of got things kicked off. And that sort of started the combination of the restaurant and our desire to have the restaurant be from its very beginnings viable and part of the community that, that made giving back part of its DNA. Um, so we've had a partnership with the food pantry now for three or four years in, up in Morristown. Uh, and then separately, we also have a partnership with the Cavalry Baptist Church up in Morristown where we've donated a number of meals this year, particularly after COVID. We also have a partnership with Madison Schools. Um, and, uh, and then there's a local not-for-profit called FLAG uh, that's hired us as well as a number of the other local restaurants to provide meals to the Morristown uh, Hospital. Um, since March when really the pandemic took hold. Our DNA since we started is, is trying to, it, rather than sort of getting rich and then deciding that we wanted to grow a conscience, grow a conscience first, it has been, I think, probably the most satisfying part of this venture. We love that community focus. It must be nice being your friends and family, being the test subjects <laughs> for all this like mouth-watering barbecue. In your view, what makes great barbecue? I think what makes great barbecue is really the experience. I mean, you can have great food at a lot of places, but where can you experience the, the, the level of community where you can share that food, the love that goes into the creation of the food? I think that's one of the reasons that barbecue hasn't become a chain concept is because the science of barbecue is, is not particularly difficult. It just requires you know, that you stay up late and, you know, cook food on low and slow for a long period of time. I think the reason it hasn't been able to take off as a chain concept is that chains rely on the dispassionate being able to churn out the same meal over and over and over again. Whereas barbecue day to day, week to week can be very different, even if it's from me, depending on how I'm feeling, depending on how I want to cook it, or if anybody in my kitchen is feeling a certain way. So it's, uh, it's a very personal food. And, and I think that that's part of what, it, when, when people come here, I want them to feel like I've invited them into my backyard and, uh, or into my house, and that I'm feeding them as I would anybody who was a visitor in my home. Sounds like both part art and part science. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are the staple traditional barbecue dishes that you serve? And then I know that you have also like Colorado style Mexican dishes. That's true. Um, so the staple stuff that we do, we do a Texas style brisket, we do baby back ribs, we do pulled pork, we do pulled chicken, smoked sausage. We actually do our own turkey, uh, where we brine turkey breast uh, for three days and then smoke it. It's actually, I'm not even a fan of turkey and I love it. And uh, we also uh, make uh, a version of what's called Montreal beef, which is a, a pastrami that was pioneered in Montreal and a customer a number of years ago asked me to make it for a catering event and it turned out so good that we just put it on the menu. Beyond that, I'm being from Colorado and being a bit of a snob when it comes to Mexican style food, um, there's not a lot of good Mexican style food in New Jersey and New York in general. And so I decided, well, if I'm gonna have a restaurant, I'll do a version of it that I like. And so we do uh, pulled pork tacos on Navajo style flatbread, uh, fry bread rather. Um, we do ch uh, chili rianos, which are hatch green chilies, which we actually get shipped out from New, uh, New Mexico each month, um, and deep fried and then served with uh, a New Mexico pork green chili that, a soup that, that I'll have for you guys in a little while. Um, and, then, uh, and then we make our own salsas. We make everything in the restaurant, 
uh, is handmade. All the sauces are handmade. All of the uh, dishes are handmade. The only things we don't make are, are really the uh, are really the breads, and that's just because we have really bad ovens. <laughs> How much gear do you need? Because I know that you have Weber smokers. You have all kinds of things. Well, if you want to be a gearhead, you can always be a gearhead in any subject, right? And so, as a cook, you know you can add as much as you like. I have. Uh, a big um, old hickory smoker that I can uh, smoke about 40 racks of ribs at once on. I also have uh, a, just a big uh, fire pit that I use for hot cooking um, when, you know, when it's a little bit nicer out. So in any event, there's, there's as much gear as, as I can get, I'll, I'll take. <laughs> I want to get back to the community focus because it is so meaningful to you. And we believe at Buy Local NJ, that is really at the heart of small business, right. giving back to the community. You have a motto or a purpose. I think it's you want to feed the community and help your neighbor. Yeah, I mean, right now our, our motto is everybody eats. The base of that was to try to create a, a company around feeding the community, helping the community, being there for people who are in need at any given point. We also, while we, while we do a lot of these things, we don't do a lot of uh, promotion around it other than just to allow people to know that we do it. Because I think that the purpose of charity isn't so that you can tell people that you're charitable. It's just to do it because that's what we think is the right thing to do. Our partnership with the food pantry, for instance, we like to promote. We like to promote because we hope that that leads other people to want to help the food pantry as well. With other initiatives that we do, we don't promote them. We just try to help the community in a, in a, in a very, you know, in a very low key way. It is, it is nice that you're giving back, not for the purpose of shining the spotlight on yourself, but your customers should know that every dish that they're enjoying here is having an impact on yeah. the community directly. We, we, we certainly hope that that's the case. We hope that everybody that comes here is having a, one, a really excellent meal, um, and two, understands that by supporting a local business, by supporting this local business, we are in turn giving back to this community as well. Well, thanks, Matt. Thanks for sharing your story, and we look forward to enjoying your food. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you. If you like it, please share it, leave a comment. We appreciate you buying local to build stronger communities. For more information, please visit us at buylocalnj.com. Thanks so much, Matt. Thank you.